Mark Bailey is joining us now from Fig Securities. Mark, good morning to you. It certainly appears as if there's nothing to bring the U.S. Fed out from under their rock, at least when it comes to September. What are the chances now for a December hike? Yeah, good morning, and Dean. As you kind of summarized there, lots of negative or uh, weaker than expected uh, U.S. data uh, out on Friday. And uh, in terms of that prospect of a hike in December, that's decreased uh, from around about 49% to 41%. So you've got to go all the way out to March 2017 when the market is in pricing in a better than 50-50 chance of a, of a Fed hike. Um, and again, you know, the, the Fed has consistently said it's always going to be data dependent. The Fed has always kind of positioned the market to expect that hike going forward and then, then pulling back and not hiking. I think that's exactly the right way. And I think this economic data confirms that, uh, you know, September, as is priced in in terms of the market expectations, is really off the table now. Yeah. And we're looking towards the, the back end of this year and even into March 2017 before there's a, a real a real chance of a hike. Let's just take a quick listen to what John Noonan from Thomson Reuters is expecting now when it comes to the U.S. Fed. My belief all along was the Fed would find an excuse not to do it. Mm. Um, and, the, you know, they're going to be very, very careful. So I think that caution that the, the Fed um, has had up until now, and that's why even though at the beginning of the year they said they were going to raise, they said they were going to raise rates four times, they haven't done any. And I think that caution will continue until they until they're really confident that the, the US economy is really standing on its own two feet and doing really well and or inflation starts to show that it's it's coming through. The as I said, the PPI numbers suggesting that inflation pressures still just aren't there. So Mark, do you think that there's gonna be a credibility problem with the US Fed or an increased credibility problem with the US Fed if we don't see a hike come this year? No, I, I don't, Nadine. And, you know, they, they've, as I said before, they've always said it's going to be data dependent. And in terms of that inflation that John just talked about, uh, we're going to get CPI this week, industrial production, uh, capacity utilization, which feeds into the GDP figures, a leading index. So, again, another pretty data heavy week for for uh, the, the US and the Fed. But I don't think in terms of the credibility, yes, it's, it has been a bit more, uh, I guess, hawkish than the market has expected. But again, as I said before, I think the Fed has done a really good job in terms of positioning that market to expect a hike and then not delivering rather than the other way around, which would really spook in the market and, and investors in particular. So I think it's, it's done a very good job and I don't think it's got a credibility issue. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just dependent on the data. Yeah, and when you talk data, I mean, one thing that the US Fed has been very clear about is that while it's not, uh, you know, it's obviously making policy for the U.S. economy, it has used these global events as an excuse or a reason not to hike. First was Brexit. Now you sort of get the sense that we need to keep a good eye on China because we had a bunch of weak data last week, import, export, as well as fixed asset investment, as well as um, industrial production on Friday. We have the IMF saying that it sees uh, Chinese economic growth can slow to as much as 6% in the next four years. So we're definitely on China watch, aren't we? Th that's right. And, and to, to add to that, you had retail sales right. and, and, and very weak credit growth as well. Uh, in addition, you know, in terms of that lower for longer theme that we've been talking about uh, for a long time, uh, you know, chi Chinese 10-year bond yields, they dropped to 266%, which I think is the lowest in, in around about 10 years. And, you know, that, you know, back backdrops nicely into the IMF's uh, kind of forecast for Chinese growth of around about 6% uh, over the next few years. And, you know, I think that's kind of ballpark where most people expect it to be 6 to 6.5%. Um, you know, whether we believe the Chinese data or not, I mean, I think that's still a pretty good um, uh, figure in terms of global um, comparisons and a lot of governments and uh, a lot of uh, countries would be more than happy with 6% growth um, and China is, it seems to be managing that transition uh, into the new uh, new economy very well. You know, it's got the regulatory uh, authorities that are not only capable and willing to support and lend uh, a kind of a, a steady hand to that transition as well as we become more rational in terms of the allocation of capital within the Chinese economy, more default rates coming through in the corporate bond market, which is an unnatural progression to a more open, mm -hmm. more broad-based economy. And I think they're doing a, a pretty good job. Okay, but there's no getting beyond the fact that we have seen weak data points as of late from China, from the U.S. So how does this all fit in with, I guess, the markets that, you operating in, that you're operating in? I mean, we continue to see equities hitting all-time record highs, but as this global hunt for yield continues. 
That, that's that's right, and uh, I mean, I, I think a really good uh, kind of synopsis of what's actually happening in the bond market is what happened when the Bank of England tried to uh, repurchase um, some gilt, some longer dated gilt. It couldn't find sufficient demand, and it actually had the, fa the first failed uh, kind of tender for bonds since it started QE way back in 2009, because um, both investors and the banks were unwilling to sell their 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 bonds because uh, there seems to be a scarcity around investors chasing yield and that's why you're seeing you know gilt yield hit record lows um, and, and record lows in Spanish yields and, and generally very very low yield around the global economy for sovereign debt as investors not only chase yield but also a safe haven asset in, in these times and that's kind of a huge difference in terms of market outlook from equities as you say are hitting all time highs and the bond market which is very very conservative and very scared about low growth, low inflation, um, low um, gr um, uh, uh, inflation coming through in terms of uh, those those forecasts and, and not, they're not still not seeing that growth um, going forward. So it's a very different views in terms of their outlooks uh, for 2017 and beyond, whereas equity seeing a lot of blue sky in the bond market is, is much more conservative. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as far as events that you're watching this week, what is looming the largest on your horizon as far as its impact likely on global bond markets? Uh, I think we've got to look at the, the, the U.S. data. I mean, obviously, there's going to be some critical data out of the, the U.K. Uh, and the post-Brexit uh, kind of first prints in terms of um, CPI on unemployment. I think they'll be uh, key in terms of assessing the impact of Brexit going forward. Also, speaking, staying in the U.K., there was a Sunday Times article now saying that the U.K. will probably not leave um, the European Union until 2019. Um, the, the, the government departments don't have the necessary people in to ne start negotiating those um, contracts uh, in terms of the exit. So they're probably not going to uh, invoke Article 50 until the, the, the best part of uh, 2017, the latter part of 2017. So in terms of uh, those points, I think uh, the UK and obviously all, always the US um, information and the, and the data that comes through there is going to be key. Leaning index, uh, as we've talked about before, industrial production, capacity utilization, and also the CPI print will be pretty key for uh, US um, data, um, bond points and, uh, and more global markets more broadly. Okay, well, we'll chat with you about it later in the week, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Nadine. Have a good one. Mark Bailey there from Fig Securities. Well, we'll pick up on that economic